Okay, as I hinted, this is the big uh, assault here. Turn 25. Now there may be more turn, more game after this. I am not counting on this assault taking the city. <coughs> as a matter of fact, I think it's very unlikely. But following the sequence, the Byzantines got to move some of their forces around. The Ottomans got to tunnel, and they successfully went under the Imperial Palace. That maybe means a wall goes. But before we get done with that, we got to go through uh, this. The assault capability pick has to be made. Now, the Ottomans have assigned their troops where they're going to go. I pick one of these counters. And I get 13, 23 points. That's a lot of points. The ones I definitely want are these two. That's five and three is eight. They're going in. Now I got 15 more. I've got Mehmet. I don't really want to use him. I want to use the Basi Bazooks. Um, I don't count them as a very effective form of attacking the city. They're mainly attrition troops. They only cost me one. They're not going to do much. But they may cause some casualties across here. Unlikely, actually. I've got eight more here or four on the palace area. Well, I definitely need to buy the palace area ones. Now I've only got ten left. That ten left could either be seven for the, mam for the uh, Janissaries, or I can unleash another big pile of... Um, these European troops or whatever to put more cannon fodder in the way and that's what I'm gonna do. So I've got basically one thing attacking in each area. I've got the siege engines here where the breaches are in the secondary walls uh, with the intention of trying to really pressure there. That's where the breakthrough is gonna happen if it can but the Byzantines can't like just stream away from here because I'm gonna be bringing in tons of troops in that way. Of course, I can't cross these secondary walls, they're unbreached, but being on the Partechion, I can start fighting my way towards the breaches. It's the best I could do. Um, if I get lucky, these guys will have a breach to go through. Remember, I can't cross these zones until I'm on the walls themselves. But that's where we, we sit. I had thought about moving some guns around this turn. The problem is the guns I wanted to move were the ones over here in the black and I, which would both take a couple turns to recharge. I would not be able to use them until the final turn in which I have to assault. I wouldn't be able to use them next turn, the one last turn that I may be knocking some walls down. Okay. So... Now we're on the Byzantine Tunnel Discovery segment. Now I know exactly where the tunnel is, which is the problem. The Byzantines get three searches where I put Grant. That doesn't help terribly much. Basically they get this hex. Um, but now I also get three searches anywhere on the board. I don't know how to do this. I do not know the locations of these. I don't know where the cannons are. So I'm going to randomize it completely. There's five different areas. What is the most likely place for the attacks? I think it's in the block or nigh just because of the lack of the uh, foss there. I'm beginning to realize that but maybe I wouldn't realize that if I was playing the Byzantines. Uh, so I guess on a uh, one through five and on a six, I'll, I'll hit up there. And that makes it very likely this tunnel is going to be discovered. Okay, that's one in the black or nigh region. We have to further check which hex I'm going for. The second one will be down here. And the third one will be down here. Okay. Which is a little weird. I would have been considering these as quite possible simply with the attempt to leave it as a surprise, but 
or this, these two are interesting because the inner walls are, so it is all kind of balanced. Anyway, in the black or not, I'm worried about near me, to tell you the truth. One, two, I can get three hexes only. These two are promising, as are these three. Any further back, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Any closer in, I'm going to catch them as they go through here. Oh, it may switch zones. Let's go with these three. And let's just go with them. What the hell? And that is going to hit. Well, let's see what happens. What happens is that tunnel's closed down uh, for three hexes in each direction. Compare this to Acre, <coughs> where I don't think we had a tunnel discovery. But if you do, you roll on a table and you do a subterranean combat. Uh, which is more interesting, which is more fun. Obviously the acre is more detailed. I kind of like it because it, it doesn't just guarantee that you're going to have uh, a success if you find it. On the other hand, <laughs> it kind of... Uh, well, actually... I yeah, yeah, it closes it down. I, I think it it doesn't. I don't think it guarantees closing down, but it's very likely to. Um, the interesting thing is the additional engineering losses and everything. Now, anyway, so now we're in the assault phase, and what we're going to be doing is Ottoman and then Byzantine movement, the simultaneous fire, engineering, where we get to fill the foss. And then the melees. Okay. And here's the problem. We only have 10 impulses to do this. If we had infinite time, we might be able to break through. Maybe not. All right, let's get started. That's what it looks like after uh, the first impulse. The Byzantines, obviously, the Ottomans have a huge force. They've got uh, siege towers under some of the units down here. But obviously, um, the Byzantine side, their wall is getting too full. I'm having to send units around here to find a gate to try to slip into some of these holes because I can't just shift their units. They can only move if they have a leader, <laughs> which is kind of weird. Here we are in the second impulse, and you can see there's a long approach time in a lot of these cases. You're not going to immediately be anywhere, but some of these guys are within their two hexes which means we get simultaneous missile fire. Now, the missile fire is just really an advantage only for the, um, for the Byzantines at this point. Uh, the Muslims can do something, but nothing really too effective. They can knock a unit ineffective so that it doesn't get to melee, but that's not gonna mean anything here. So we look for where we've got two hexes, and we've got this long string here that's, I don't really want to do that because that's going to take a long time on video all at once. But if we look over here, I've got two units facing one. Um, so this is simultaneous along this long string as well as this, but you can kind of partition things out as, as you go. Now obviously as the whole wall gets uh, advanced on, it starts getting kind of messy. But one of the advantages is Unlike, say, Acre, which had the same kind of system, where you had kind of an enveloping situation, here it's linear in the sense that uh, it's unlikely that something that happens down here is going to affect this. And you can kind of semi-partition as you're going. Uh, not really easy to explain this, but anyway. Um, I'm going to roll two white dice for the Ottoman units and a red die for the Byzantines. They probably won't be that way elsewhere. The Byzantines have a minus one, or the Ottomans have a minus one to their die rolls to indicate the effect of the wall there. These aren't breached walls. And nothing happens. All right. I guess we're going to have to start working our way down the line to see some effect and you're going to see some possible losses on the ottoman side um for the ottomans i actually don't have to roll there is nothing they can do all they can get is the uh 
uh, ineffective markers. These guys over here, which just basically indicate, hey, you're not going to get to melee this turn. Uh, they go away immediately afterwards. So let's just start shooting down the line, and it's not too exciting. Um, the only thing that matters here are sixes. Fives would matter if I had been sitting here and filled in the foss. Whether or not I want to fill in the foss is an interesting question. Um, it improves the attack strength of the Byzantines if they attack units that are in the foss and it's not filled. But it also, uh, I think, gives them a bonus. No, it doesn't give them a missile bonus in this game. Um, that could be a big deal, but on the other hand, getting across quickly seems like a more important thing in this game. I do have to fill FOSS spaces, though, for where I want to bring siege towers to fly. If I need to. I might decide they're not worth it either. Speaking of which, I don't have any siege towers within two hexes of uh, a catapult, mm, certainly not next to a Byzantine unit on the wall, so I can't Greek fire them. All right, let's start just going down the line. One, okay, we got a hit. And these units flip in the opposite direction from what I like. Another one there. Oh, and you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just uh, marching down the line firing on each one. Uh, I'm going to put a little marker. Let's see which... I hit this guy, I shot at these two. I'm going to put a marker there to remind me that's the next one because I'm going to take this offline. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to destroy units because weakening them is more valuable. I'd rather have worse strength units up at the front where they're going to delay and slow down the heavier units making it through. Yeah, they may not, I can just walk through them. But damaged units are as effective in my book as destroyed units. There's no reason to destroy the Ottomans here. Now for the Byzantines, there might, uh, for the Ottomans attacking the Byzantines, there might be a reverse situation. I haven't really thought about that too much. Uh, knocking actual holes in the defenses, making it so that they can't hold the entire length of the line, might be important. But Given that every other hex is usually sufficient on here, that's going to be a hell of a task, too. And here in the uh, third impulse, you can see the wave is striking the wall. Got some guys filling the foss to try to let the uh, siege towers into play. Over here, they weren't able to, to position themselves for that yet. We even got a little bit of engagement over here coming from there. At this point, now the Byzantines get to fire. Well, both sides get to fire. The Ottomans trying to get sixes because it's behind the wall to cause the ineffective results on the Byzantines, which means they won't get to melee. The Byzantines trying to either do the same or even if they can get a six, uh, actually reducing an Ottoman unit. In some ways, getting the ineffectives is more useful in the short term. But, you know, obviously cleaning out uh, Causing casualties is overall going to help a lot overall. Overall. Just to use it. The rules to this game, like Acre, don't really specify whether ineffective prevents you from filling the foss. But given the order of play, uh, where you do the fire combat before the engineering, uh, my assumption is that's the case. So I knocked out one foss filler with an ineffective marker their marker off. But these others do get to play, and I'll move them. They're hard to grasp with my fingers. Um, you can also see how dice were hot for a series, <laughs> and then kind of cold other times. Kind of an interesting thing. You know, I'm switching dice in and out and everything. I basically just take a handful of dice, and I don't roll too hard, but I'm throwing, you know, uh, one, di one die, and then another die, and then another die, <laughs> and you can just see they're, they're all coming up the same. It's just weird. Um, I don't believe there was anything unbalanced there. Just just like what I just showed. I, I didn't grab dice that were in particular facings. And uh, they moved. They, they turned out pretty strangely. Anyway. Um, 
Now what we're going to go to is the Byzantine Melee segment. And let's get an example of at least a simple attack. Uh, the Byzantines are fighting down here. Let's see if I can zoom that in a little. Uh, what do we have here? Archbishop Leonard and these Genoese. Now let's see what the rules tell us about what those numbers mean. So on the troops, it goes attack, morale, defense. And on the leader, it's combat, morale, and then morale radius. And, well, not looking through the camera, obviously. Okay. So, this has a defense of two. It's in the FOSS, which I have to keep in mind. This is going to have an attack strength of 2 plus 1 is 3. And then come over here. And our total attack strength is 3, our defense is 2. And this is what's painful about this system is it's two die rolls. So I need a 2 through 4 or an 11 to hit that unit. But... I forgot about the unfilled foss. Um, it's actually a two higher attack strength. So my attack wasn't three, it's five against two. I need a six through eight. And that's my to hit number. Then if I hit, I go and compare the morale and we'll see how that works. Okay, I got a successful hit. And I could conceivably do a uh, gamers type situation and roll the damage die along with it, but at this point I don't want to do that. The morale of the defender, is center number, that's a two. There's no army morale in this game, unlike some of the others. But we have a modifier. Do we have a leader down here? We do not have a leader in range. The leader is over here. He's too far away. That was a bad move by me. I should keep my leaders to the center. Uh, so I simply roll a die against this. I get a six. That's two steps. Well, there goes the unit. And we'll keep a dead pile over here for now. As you can see, it's kind of a tedious combat system. As with many things in this game, there's a high burden on the mechanical side. Um, having to roll two dice for combat, having to check the tables in the way that you do is kind of unfamiliar and it is going to have a higher cost than in a lot of games. But I guess you'll get used to it to some extent. Um, I'll let you know whether I get used to it by the end of this, uh, this assault. All right, I'm going to take those offline and kind of show you what happens. But then after the Byzantines attack, then we have the Ottoman attacks as well, which may actually gain some ground. Let's not get too far uh, above this right now. So I don't know if zones uh, cross walls, actually. If they don't, then I'm kind of unrestricted there. But if they do cross walls, I've got certain restrictions that I wanted to point out. Um, no, they don't go through the wall. So the Byzantines basically have the option to attack whatever they like. When we hit the Ottomans, the situation is going to be kind of different, but not terribly. Basically, the restriction is they must all attack something that has a zone on them. <laughs> But there's no requirement to attack every unit, which is kind of interesting because there's no real reason you wouldn't want to attack. So I'm not sure why there's this restriction in particular. The Byzantines managed to do some damage, not just this eliminated unit. Uh, they knocked a couple of units with retreat markers, with retreat results. Now, retreat results are kind of potent in this because they throw you back to the uh, off board. You're available for the next res re uh, assault, but you can't attack in the current one. That may be worse than a 1 in some cases, and not many. Uh, the 1s are kind of difficult too because, see these reduced units, I'm going to have to keep track of the fact that they're reduced when I pull them off map. Right now I've got everything just in these trays, and there's some danger that I might just scoop up a tray without paying attention to that, so I've got to be kind of careful about that. Anyway, haven't seen a lot of effect from the Byzantine attacks. 
Uh, there is one interesting thing. This is kind of annoying, and I almost wonder if there's a mistake because of this. Uh, the Europeans have a morale of two. Or no, a defense of two, a morale of three. And their leader has a morale effect of three. Which means they go to a morale of six, which is, as far as I can tell, useless. Five is the maximum you're allowed in the game. Um, maybe, I wouldn't be shocked if the Sultan... Yeah, the Sultan also pushes you up to six. So I'm just not sure why that matters, to tell you the truth. Um, I think they can only command their own contingent. I think they can only affect their own contingent, but I'm not sure about that. Maybe if you put multiple contingents in there, this guy or the Sultan becomes more helpful to others. I can look that up. Anyway, now the... Uh, Ottomans get their chance to strike back, and they don't have much, but we'll see what they can do. In their case, they must attack with everything that's adjacent to the Byzantine units because they're in the zones of control. Everything that's not ineffective, these ineffective throughout. But there's no harm. I mean, there's no damage that comes to you from making a bad attack. Thing I want to think about a little bit with the uh, navies here, actually, that no bad attack applies there too. When you make a melee attack with the navies, there's nothing bad that happens when you make an attack, but you must, in that case, meet a certain soak-off requirement. There's nothing like that here. You don't have to match. You don't have to attack everything in your zone. You don't have to get some minimum value on there. All right, I'll start rolling the Ottomans rather than jabbering away. I think this is interesting because you have to deal with the effects of the wall here, no? I'm not sure where I want to advance most, into here or here. I'm going to go for this one with the thought that it's more exposed somehow or whatever. So here I have six strength points attacking. Ooh, this one's weaker. I have more of a chance here. Let's do the uh, one unit against this. So I have three strength points attacking a three defensive unit. But my three strength points is at minus three due to the wall. That's going to get me down below a, a one. So I don't have to, I don't get a roll there even. Here though I have six strength points attacking a defense of three again. My six is going to be at minus three, so I'll be at three against three. I'm going to need a seven to succeed, and I'm rolling the damage die in there just in case. I do not get the seven, so I have no effect. And that's kind of... Uh, what you're going to see from those outer walls is that they're going to prevent attacks. I'm going to want to combine units to make the attack. So here I have six strength points against two. Now, this two, he's near uh, Giovanni, so his morale is going to go up to a five, which is almost unbeatable. But let's see. So six to two, that actually is three to two. I need a two, four, or 11. And I don't get that. And I'll just keep going down the line. As you can see though, you do really have to do lots of lookups. There's no real easy knowing whether or not you're safe on any given roll. It's, so CWB, uh, OCS, these games have fairly complex combat charts. But you can realize, yeah, nothing's going to happen on that roll. Wow, with CWB with the fire truck. Oh, CS, you're going to have to look everything up anyway. Uh, but for something where you're only affecting one person, it's kind of funny to have numbers kind of skewed all over the place, and you don't know exactly what you're going to be facing. Interesting little gotcha in the rules here that I remember. So I'm making an attack on this with the leader right there. That doesn't really hurt too much. The leader's strengths are only applicable, their morale is applicable on everything, but they're, well, on defense, but their strength is applicable only on the attack, which is kind of important because uh, otherwise they would provide a defensive bonus, which they don't really, uh, which they don't do in it. They're not going to improve the chance of not getting hit. Um, and that kind of makes sense if you think about it. A leader isn't particularly going to make his troops harder to hit. He's going to encourage them to fight better, which might actually cause more of them to get hit. All right, anyway, I gotta figure out whether or not I wanna do two attacks or one big one and leave this poor sucker out. 
I don't know which odds is better. Probably two attacks is better. Now, spending more time on camera than not here, actually, and I keep plugging in, but the attack here caused an R result on the Byzantines. Now, what does that mean? One, the Byzantines could retreat one hex. That would give the wall to the Ottomans, however. Or I can take a step loss and not give the wall to the Ottomans. Um, I don't really want to get Ottomans on that wall because that'll start opening what up? A chance to roll this whole thing up? I don't know. Uh, I mean, the breach is quite far behind. I can't penetrate any of this stuff. Yeah, I'm going to retreat. And the big long lines of ineffective Ottomans down here meant that uh, that was pretty much all that happened. I think I had one more attack that failed. But we move into Impulse 4. Got a little something to keep us excited. And we have the Siege Towers coming forward which may be able to actually get us close to here. This guy's not that impressive. He's just, you know, able to maybe attack a little bit more easily along the Paratechion to get his way towards a potential breach. But I only have two entrances on this whole side of the board here. <laughs> and then I have this, which I can breach. I can get through there. Uh, to help the Byzantines a little bit, well, their last unit has become activated because I have engaged. The Ottomans have actually charged in and attacked. And I'm going to take a little break. And you can see the hordes move forward once again, although we do have a little halt to fill the foss there so that the siege engines can get through. A whole lot less ineffectives. I've been rolling a lot of sixes, which on the Byzantine side means ineffectives, but on the uh, Ottoman side, Means some damaged Bashi Bazooks, a couple of other places. I just don't know. <laughs> there I was using the same dice again and again, but these are fair dice, I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, anyway, they get streaky. So now it's time for the biz. Oh, and the painful thing every one of the siege towers that moved up next. Now they. It says, oh, they're not affected by normal fire combat. Yeah, same chance of destruction of both the siege tower and the unit in it. Three of them, boom, 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 right down the line. And that was all different dice, so I don't know. All right. Oh, the poor Bashi Bazooks. Uh, charging in through the Foss. Bad move for them with their one defensive factor. Basically, it ups the attack value, so, you know, like a two-point attacker swinging in at them is going to be on the four table to the one. That's five through eight. There's a fair chance of hitting there, right? Uh, One-sixth for seven, two-sixths. Somewhere over a third. Um, and then they roll on this damn table, and it's very, very likely to either... Send them, well, it's going to do something, and it might well just send them back, or it's pretty likely to do damage or even destroy them, and our dead pile just keeps growing. Babble time again. It was mentioned uh, on my YouTube channel that the, the last two failed to take the city, and this one maybe is the chance, but uh, it looks pretty unlikely to me. <laughs> There's a question of balance in that, but... There really isn't so much as, well, so these were historical victories by the attackers in every case. But on the other hand, the game is balanced on the, this is when it was historically taken, or this is close to when it historically fell. Let's try to make, you know, that you have to take it in a certain amount of time. The Constantinople one, yeah, there is actually a reason that time is useful. Tyre a little less, so Acre, the time limit is completely arbitrary. Um, it's just a balancing function in that one. Now, there's also the fact that, quite simply, it's harder to attack. Uh, 
So me coming into these games, you know, not having played them for a decade and never having played them very heavily, I don't have a real huge idea of how to do the attack. And the defense is pretty damn simple. Cover the wall, you know? Uh, so I'm learning things like, geez, I really should have filled the foss. Now, I think other times I've played, I went about filling the foss and didn't like how much it slowed me down. And I figured these are just bashi bazooks and, and European slave units and such. The hell with them, you know? Charge, let's do some damage. Well, they don't get a chance to swing if they get destroyed before their attack round. And on the fifth round, or moving into the fifth round, we've picked up a couple of tower, a couple of wall hexes. We lost the other one. Concentrated fire managed to disintegrate the unit. But now we're facing one more. Um, as to the historicity of the Bashi Bazooks melting away, historically, they led the first assault and were pretty much destroyed. Um, in fact, the Crusaders took, or I'm sorry, the Byzantines took absolutely no deaths in the first uh, assault wave. The first day of assault. That's pretty astounding when you think about it. I, heavy, heavy armor though on these units. And we're not seeing it. I mean, we're, we're seeing they have the option to retreat fairly regularly, but their ratings, their morale the quantity of leaders they have on the board, which means that almost everything is covered with a leader. There are some spaces where it's not, like here. Uh, but it means that they can continuously not lose units. <laughs> they're, they're, they're very unlikely to actually take a, uh, an actual casualty. They might take a leader casualty, though because some of these retreat results and such not have a star on them, which could knock somebody out for at least a while. And here we go once more into, well, I guess the lack of breach. <laughs> once more against the walls. Uh, at least we don't have to roll a die to see if we fall off the ladder on the way out. But this is actually harder to seem to gain purchase, I think, than it was an anchor. Uh, one of those wall purchase spaces was knocked off. I don't remember where. This is all we got left. But we managed to hit, injure some of these Genoese up here. That's the first casualties the Byzantines have taken. So we're doing better than the first assault that uh, Mehmed actually did. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's a lot later in the game. He opened, he essentially opened things up with an assault to try to soften things up. That's a really bad move because it opens all the reinforcements up. Uh, from the Byzantines. So you don't want to do that unless you can create some significant casualties, which you failed to do. Uh, I guess we move on. More pushing against the wall, and you can see in places, most places, the horde's gotten a lot thinner. It's not right here. Um, this was a big pile, and it hasn't taken many losses. I can't spread them out into other attack zones though. I've got to keep them all there. The Byzantines have kind of filled in the entirety of the wall, uh, except for this one space here where the Ottomans have taken it over. Um, <clears throat> finally got all my reinforcements kind of up on the wall. There's a little bit of difficulty in maneuvering things, at least if you're me. More Byzantine units were damaged on this next uh, round. Um, over here, this one could have retreated. It got a retreat result, but chose to take a loss instead. This one got a retreat re result. Uh, no, under here there's a damaged unit that uh, took a retreat result. And it had nowhere to go. It can't cross these secondary walls. There's no, uh, it's simply no movement across them if they're unbreached. You can walk through the gates where they exist, but this was a place where I'm pinned in place and had to take casualties. I would have given that hex up if I could have, because it doesn't seem to have meant much to give them the protection. But uh, this was a bit much since I have units that can start filling that in. So I don't want to give uh, entry to the city this early in things. Uh, four more rounds. 
I could get quite a few strength points in. Remember, it's only 25 strength points and it's over. And that's the weak point for me is where I don't have the secondary uh, level of ball. You can see in most cases the Ottoman numbers are just dwindling to nothing. Now, these aren't entirely removed. So, for example, there's a lot of retreats there. A couple more here. Um, but just not, you know, sustaining the attack in this area especially. It's that's where all the retreats are, I think. No, that's actually Anatolian 1. Those are pretty much all destroyed. Anatolian 2 is over here. Uh, so that's going to be a decent sized force left. So basically I have three decent forces. These guys who are mostly off the board for the next assault. The Europeans here are such a big force, they'll be able to play. And then of course uh, the Janissaries, which I held out of this attack. The Janissaries aren't bad. Um, they're going to have a higher defensive strength at four than most of, well, than anything that the Ottomans have, and than actually most of the, uh, the Byzantine forces. Uh, however, they're still not sufficient to just push their way through, I don't think. We'll see. Um, this attack is not going anywhere. But I don't want to call it off entirely, although I may want to pull these units out just because I don't want to lose the... Oh no, these units are the ones that are decent sized force. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll keep attacking because I've got some possibility here of doing some damage. And the Basi Bazooks are worthless. I may want to keep them as a reserve. I may want to pull them out and use them as some kind of reserve to try to get additional points in uh, in another bat in another round. I don't think they're going to be able to do anything of effectiveness once they get down to that one strength point unit. Um, it basically the best I can do is three three units on one, where the hex grid allows that. And if they're all one strength point units coming across the wall, that means I don't get to roll. Uh, as long as I have the three-point units, great, but chances are some of the units end up ineffective. I, I just don't think they can keep it up. I pushed through the ninth of these impulses. I've jumped ahead a little bit. You can see there's almost nothing on the line up here. Basically no chance of breaking through and getting the kind of points I need. The only question is, can I do any damage that will help me in the long run? So for example, Taking losses on this, the para division is so weakened, I only have one other unit, that I don't really have oh, over there and then two over here. I don't really have enough to justify bringing it into play. Worse than that, the Pasha Fort, he wasn't killed, but he was knocked out for enough turns that it's not worth yeah, that he won't be in during the play of the game. Uh, this unit here is one of the Anatolians. Let's see, it's Anatolia one. Doesn't look like there's anything left of that. So in a sense, there's no harm to losing it. It's not going to do much. Oh yeah, but I could commit it if I get lots and lots of points, and there's a pretty good chance of getting lots and lots of points at this point in the turn. Like, unlike the para, this one actually provides at least a good unit and a leader. Oh. The Europeans over here have a very good leader. I may not want to risk them. They have a significant amount of troops. I may want to pull them out. On the other hand, they're one of the few with any chance of doing anything, but they've been knocked off the wall. They had been on the wall before. And the Bashi Bazooks. I'm not going to say they're completely irrelevant, uh, they've been knocked down pretty hard, though, and they're not going to do anything or much of anything. So I think I will pull the rest of them out. I've already started pulling them out. Uh, whether or not anything's going to be around for the next round's firing, I'm not sure. It's really a matter of if I can justify any reason, any reasonable chance of getting an attack in. Uh, obviously, you know, the chance of getting victory here is nil, but that doesn't really matter. And actually, if I was here, I could climb up into the wall here for whatever that matters. Again, 
I've got to get inside the city proper with 25 strong points, not just on, on, in, in between the walls. After a somewhat ignominious uh, attack here on the walls, everything else I pulled back from ended up losing another unit there. That's it. Now, unlike an acre, the Byzantines get to repair the walls as well. They get, I believe, a shot to remove the foss. Forgot to look that up. Um, but that's a, a pretty big factor because this is a turn without bombardment, which means n chances are, and we'll see, that I'm going to lose the couple of breaches that I have that made this barely worth doing. Now, I've got another turn to bombard before I have to absolutely have to make my assault. And as we end turn 25, moving into turn 26, we have absolutely no breaches. No risk at all as far as I'm concerned. I can't move my guns, even the normal guns, if I move them into here to concentrate fire or some such. Uh, they're not going to get to fire this turn. And then next turn, well, I've got to assault next turn, right? And I certainly can't this one. I forgot to check the foss. I think it's one to four. Let me see if I can clean those up. All right. Yeah. Got a little less than expected, I guess, but there's still a decent amount of foss fill in place. I can't clean that up <laughs> except during an assault phase. Weird little differences between the games. This one, though, has a lot of differences in terms of like just how combat is handled and everything. It's all very uh, different from the acre tire model. Um, I don't think we have much of a chance, but we got the biggest boys available for the last turn. We got the Janissaries. We've got the Europeans. We've got a decent group of Anatolians still left. A lot of power, comparatively, but I don't think it'll be enough. I was hoping to do more damage to the uh, Byzantines. It's been pretty limited. All right, let's send this one.